Amen. Amen. Good morning, Livestream Church, and uh, Happy New Year. Can you please uh, greet the person next to you and say, I am glad that you are here. That you're here. Amen, amen. Um, as we continue, let us uh, once again let's pray. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for giving us this time together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you because uh, of the the blessings that you have given to us, Lord, the, the family that you gave us, and most of all the the relationship that you started in our life. Thank you, God, because through you, Lord, we can do all things because according to your word, you are the one who uh, will 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 uh, do all things for us, Father God. We pray that may you help us to understand your word. Help us, Lord, to may you give us wisdom. The Holy Spirit will guide us this morning and he will uh, speak to us. Let your anointing be to each one of us, Lord, as your servant deliver your word. Help us, Lord, that... Uh, May the wisdom coming from you be unto us. And as we meditate on your word, Lord, as help us to to uh, fully understand and help us, Lord, that whatever um, you prepared for us this morning, help us to most of all apply this in our daily life. Thank you, Father. We lift up uh, to you everything that we have uh, this morning, especially uh, those who are in need, Lord. Help us to to receive the, the blessings, Lord God. I pray and declare that you will pour out your blessings to us. Those who need healing, they will be healed. Those who need financial blessings, they will be blessed, Lord God. And those who need spiritual strength, spiritual blessings, Lord, you will pour out to each one of us according to uh, our needs, Lord. So thank you, Father. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, let's open our Bible in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 2. In Matthew chapter 2, uh, New International Version, it says in verse uh, 7, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had, ha had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their journey or on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose uh, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Verse 10, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On the coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May the Lord bless us as we study uh, his word this morning. The message of uh, the title of the message is um, Jesus came. To be worship. Jesus came to be worship. Jesus was born as God's uh, invitation for us all of His creation to worship Him. God was pleased when when He created everything. You know what? In the book of Genesis, it says at the end of each day, during the six days of creation, God concluded its day as it was good. No matter what happened. To us last year, let us conclude it and say it was good. Everything that God has done and is doing is good. And no matter what, ha what will happen this year, even though it is just the beginning of the year, we can already conclude this year it will be good. Amen? Because God is good. Years are just an empty space where we fill it in with our actions. We don't expect for the year to give us anything we want, like many believe. Some folks welcome the new year with uh, the belief that of what they want to happen. Our life is not based on the year 
but on the Lord. It is the Lord God who holds our future. It is not the round-shaped roots, the feast table, the abundant beginning of the year, but a dedication to God that will make our life successful. Everyone wants to have a successful life. Can you say amen to that? God wants our life to be successful in this world. Successful life is a life that is living according to the purpose of why we exist. And God's purpose for us is to worship Him. As the year 2021 has ended and a new year has begun, it is time for a life evaluation. God allows a year to end and a new one to begin for us to continue to live a life or to live the life that pleases Him. We leave our past behind and look forward to what God lays ahead of us. Maybe you live a life in the past that is not fully in line with the will of God. This year, it is time to make it right. As long as we are still alive, God is extending His grace to us to make ourselves right as we turn away from sin. This is the message of the new year where we see more of God's grace as He is patient with us. He is patient to reach unto us to be prepared for the life that is to come. So don't you ever live in your past, but live a life that God has planned. Like a small child who needs guidance, may the hands of God be our guide. As the Lord has begun this year and we pass through it, let us take a moment to get His message from us or for us from the Scripture. The story of this wise man who traveled from their own land, from the east, to worship. What can we learn from this passage and on, on, on how we can truly worship God? This year will be a good year for us if we will fill its day with worship to God. So there are three things that I want you to focus on, to, uh, on uh, as we follow to how you will worship God. Number one is this, the desire, how we will worship God. Desire to worship God. It's they desire to worship God. In, in order to worship God, we need to have the desire. Not just a desire, but a godly desire. What is your heart's desire? If we will have a spiritual checkup right now, we will have different test results. People these days are so conscious if they have the virus or not. If we feel uncommon feelings, we immediately want to get a test, right? If this will be our spiritual attitude, can you imagine if this will be our spiritual attitude every time we don't feel in good shape spiritually and losing our desire to worship? you immediately come to God and ask for a spiritual checkup, that will be awesome. The result will, will depend on the condition of the heart. If the heart is broken, there will be a result of a broken desire. An, an, an unclean heart will, be, will have an unclean desire, while an empty heart will have no desire at all. So what is the condition of your heart? To worship God, begins from our heart. Your heart represents who you are. In this world, it says, or they say, follow your heart. But in the Bible, it says, do not follow your heart. Why? Because most of the time, our heart is deceiving. In Jeremiah chapter 17, in English Standard Version, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. So in New Living Translation, it says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. There are two reasons why, why we should not follow our heart. The Bible says our heart is what? Deceitful and our heart is wicked. So now, who can tell how bad the condition of the heart is? Only God Himself. The Bible says that, uh, in Jeremiah 17 verse 10 but I the Lord search all hearts 
and I examine secret motives. So the Lord knows what is in our heart. We can be in denial with the condition of our heart to others or even to ourselves, but not with God. Because the heart is deceitful and wicked, make sure not to follow it in every decision you will make this year. Now, how can we make our heart right? Let the Lord reach for it. It is the Lord who searches all hearts. As God, ask God to search your heart and make it right. To clean it as He gives you a right spirit, the right desire. In the book of Genesis, Cain's worship. These two brothers, they worship God. But Cain's worship was not accepted because his heart's desire wasn't right. If you find yourself making a wrong decision, it's not too late to turn around and make it right, to have a heart's right desire to worship God. These wise men have the desire to worship God. How did it begin? It began when they carefully studied about when the Messiah was to be born. Many theologians believe that these wise men were the descendants of Daniel's prophetic students during the exile of the Israelites to Babylon. They learned from the prophet Daniel what will be the sign of the birth of the coming king and uh, the coming king of the Jew, which his kingdom will never end. And they discovered ex it exactly as it was taught to them. Because in our text, it says in verse 7, in Matthew 2, verse 7, Then Herod called the Magi secretly, okay, the word Magi means wise men, and found out, found out from them the exact time. So how did these wise men know the exact date of when Jesus was born? No one knows when the Messiah will, will be sent to earth except God alone. No one among Israel during that time knows when the Messiah will be born. They knew, they knew where is the exact location because it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. It is in Bethlehem. But, oh, I'm sorry, in the, the book of Micah. But it, 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 for the exact date, no one knows. No one knows. Even for Mary and Joseph, they were told that the baby in Mary's womb is the son of the Most High the Savior of the world, but the angel never mentioned when will be the exact date Jesus will be born. Even up to these days, we never know the exact Christmas day. Only the wise men knew the exact time. From the time they discovered the exact date Jesus was born, they had the desire to come and worship. The desire to worship God comes, remember, it comes from God Himself. It comes from God. Who has the desire to worship God? A person who experienced the reason why Jesus was born is the one who will have the desire to worship God. The one who considers Jesus as His King. When Jesus is born into your heart, God will give you the desire to worship God. The desire, that, the desire comes from God as we carefully study His Word. When Jesus comes into your life, He will not only save you, but rule over you. He will be the, your Savior. He will be your King. A saved person has a Jesus ruling life. You cannot be saved and still live your own desire. Jesus saved you to belong to God's kingdom and Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns to everyone who belong to God's kingdom. So how this, did these wise men know the exact date? They only knew it when it happened. God gave them a sign. God gave them a sign. In verse 7, it says, The star had appeared. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them, them the exact time the star had appeared. 
the star was a sign for them. When it appeared, they knew exactly that the Messiah was born and their journey to worship began. The Bible didn't mention if this if, if these wise men were kings, but we know for sure these were wise men. They became wise not because of their intellectual, not because of their careful study of the prophecy, but they became wise because God chose to reveal it to them. In Matthew 11, it says, the Lord Jesus prayed and he said, at the time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. In New Living Translation, it says, the word children, it was written as childlike. Childlike. Okay? And it says there that those to whom God chose chooses or chooses to reveal to reveal him. So this man became wise because God revealed to them when Jesus was born, when they saw the star. The star is their sign to know who Jesus is, to see and to worship him. You are wise. Tell this to the person next to you. You are wise if God revealed himself to you. Jesus reveals himself to those who are childlike. Those who need help. Who are the wise in the eyes of God? The one whom he revealed himself to. We become wise because of God. The wise man or the, or the, the wise by the standard of this world are fools in the eyes of God. In 1 Corinthians 3, do not be deceived yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in, the, in God's sight. As it is written, he, will, uh, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. You should become a fool by the standard of this world to become wise in the eyes of God. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the, from the Spirit of God, but con considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Wise by the standard of this world is fool in the eyes of God. While fools by the standard of this world is wise in the eyes of God. In this world, it's foolishness when it refers to Christ. When they know, when you share to them, about, when you tell them about Christ, when you share to them the word of God, they, when they look at you, they look, at you as a fool. You know, the, the people in this world thought that they are wise because of, of, of what they learned from this world. They are fools because they cannot understand even those who, who graduated in, those who have degrees, but uh, when you tell them about God, about Christ, they don't understand. When you share them the Bible, they don't understand. And it means they are fool because they don't understand. And, and, and they cannot accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. In, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So that no one may boast before him. 
It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is a righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. We become wise because we have the mind of Christ. Because we have Christ. It says, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Because we have the mind of Christ, we understand the instructions of God. When God gave you the desire to worship, He will give you also the desire to invite others to do the same. So the second point is to have God's desire is to invite. It says He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. A person who has the desire to worship God invites others to do the same. Amen? How many of you invites others to, do, to, to worship God? You know what? If David was the king back then, when the wise men, in, uh, when the, the wise men visited, uh, this wise men who visited Jerusalem and, and was told that the Messiah was born, he will never send them away. To worship rather he will go with them amen if david was the king he will go with them because in psalms 122 verse 1 i rejoice with those who said to me let us go to the house of the lord amen if someone invites you to worship the lord and if you are a worshiper and you were invited by another worshiper to worship god it will be a joy for you to come and worship David was known to be a man after God's own heart because he is a worshiper. He is a worshiper. Do you want to become like David? Be worshiper of God. God is delighted when we worship him. Don't be content to worship God alone. Invite someone to join you beginning from your family. Make Jesus known to them so they can worship too. The news of this wise man was a threat to King Herod, knowing his throne will come to an end. You know, to some people, our invitation might be a threat to them. That God will expose them, that's why they are afraid to come with us. This man, who knew the exact date when Jesus was born, came, uh, became wise, but to those who have been told about it, who has the standard of this world, is is a fool like Herod. Herod was, Herod has has a wrong motive to worship, because he is not a believer. He cannot truly worship God because he doesn't have the desire. He he has wrong motive. He is jealous and selfish. A person cannot worship God if his heart is full of jealousy, and selfishness. During you know during the ancient days. A king wants to be worshipped. Like King Nebuchadnezzar, if you read the Old Testament, like King Nebuchadnezzar, he built his own image to be worshipped. King Herod built, he rebuilt the temple to get the people's loyalty. He wants to rule over Israel. When he heard about the exact birth date of the next king of Israel, he became jealous and his desire is to kill the baby Jesus. The exact picture of the Antichrist who will rule in Jerusalem one day. He will kill all who will not worship him. For us, let us invite people to worship God for no one else and nothing else is to be worshipped except God alone. When you invite someone, let me tell you this, when you invite someone, make Jesus known and God will give that person the desire. To worship God. Amen. Secondly is the gifts. The gifts. In verse 8 or, or verse 9, after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, 
they were overjoyed. On the coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know what? We need the gifts to worship God. These wise men never stopped searching until they reached the place where the baby Jesus was and worshipped. At the time they saw the star stop over the place where the child was, they were overjoyed. How many, how, many, how many have the kind of spirit when you reach the place to worship? We've we, we never been back to our in-person worship. Okay, our, our, our place of worship is still there in, in 7208 Mission Street. We never been back since to, uh, March of 2020. So it's almost two years now. So, but what we're doing right now, this online uh, gathering, online worship, have you experienced the same, or do you have the same spirit, that kind of spirit, when we're, uh, when it's about to gather in fellowship, whether it is Sunday, Bible study, prayer meeting, have you have this kind of spirit when you, uh, uh, when you are about to worship God, you are filled over with joy? You know what? These wise men, at the moment they entered the house, they worshiped Jesus. They were filled with, with, with they were overjoyed. They were filled with, uh, the Bible says, they were filled over with joy. When they saw the star stop, and they saw that the star stop where the child was. And when they entered the house, they bowed down and worshiped Jesus, the baby Jesus. Our worship is not addressed to Joseph, not addre uh, should not be addressed even to Mary, but to Jesus alone. The Bible says they worship him. The baby or the child was with his mother and they worship him. You will never find any passage in the Bible that Mary was worshipped. No one in the Bible worshipped Mary and even prayed to Mary. Only to Jesus alone. Only to Jesus alone. They worship Jesus. It, they didn't say, oh, it's just a baby, never mind. No, they came, they searched and came to worship the King, the King Jesus. The wise men didn't come to the temple to worship God, but to look for the newborn child and worship. The beginning of a God kind of worship where we worship God wherever we are. You know, the very first place of worshiping God in person, this is in person worshiping. They came from the East. Okay, they, they, they didn't say, oh, let us just worship in spirit. And we know that the, 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 that the Messiah was born. We saw the, the star. And let's just worship God. No, they traveled that long. They want to see the, the Lord. They want to see the King. They want to see Jesus. And the very first place of worship in person is in the house, not in the manger. It's in the house. That's why when Herod called um, or ordered to kill the, 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 all the, uh, the child in, in, in Bethlehem, he ordered two years old below. So probably Jesus was in, in at the age of two years uh, at this time. It is not the temple in Jerusalem, nor on the mountain like what Jesus told the Samaritan woman, but the true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Jesus was born on earth to, for, for man, for us, to experience to worship God. You know, God is looking for a true worshipper. John 4, it says, But the time is coming. And Jesus said, Indeed, it's here now. 
from the time that Jesus was born, that is the beginning of a true worship when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in, in truth. God is a spirit and not limited by time and space to be worshipped. And God should be worshipped the way He wants to be worshipped. We don't worship God the way we want to or when we want to, but it is, but in, in His own way. Our worship to God is not complete, remember, without offering. When we worship God, He doesn't want for us to come with an empty hand. When godly people worship God, they bring gifts and or offering to God. Because the offering signifies God has blessed you. You know, you cannot give to God unless God bless you first. That's the that's the that's the uh, logic of this. You cannot offer anything to God unless God bless you first. So the offering that you will present to God is also from Him. Remember, a true worshiper comes to worship and bring gifts or offering to God because worship is being thankful to God. Because worship is being thankful to God. These wise men were well prepared. They came from the east from a long journey but they but didn't come with an empty hand. Amen? When you come to worship, first, is to prepare yourselves prepare yourselves because ourselves is our first offering to God in Romans 12 therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your true and proper worship so ourselves our life is first of all it is our first offering to God ourselves is our first offering to God when you offer your body to God it should be daily as you live holy and pleasing to God that is our worship our worship is not just on every Sunday or every fellowship but it, it is from Monday or from Sunday to Saturday seven days a week it is our day of worship from, from Sunday to Saturday. So how will our offering be acceptable unto God? You know, we, we give our tithes, we give our offering to the Lord. But how can you tell, how can you know if our offering uh, is acceptable by God? So like what I said, the first offering we, we present is ourselves. And the Bible says we should not be confirmed, or I mean conform to the pattern of this world. So that's our worship unto God. We should not conform to the pattern of this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then the Bible says you will be able to test and approve what God will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's worship. When you are doing His will, His good and pleasing, perfect will, then you are absolutely worshiping God. By having a renewed mind, so every day we should ask the Lord to renew our mind because this world is like a virus, you know, making our mind uh, um, unhealthy, making our mind unclean. Worshippers of God does not conform to the pattern of this world. We should not be driven by the things of this world. Our mind, our whole being should be, should not be conformed to the pattern of this world because we are called to be separated from this world. The church, ecclesia, meaning separated from this world. We are worshippers of the Lord, not worshippers of the world. You will become like whom you worship. If you are a worshiper of God, you will become holy like Him. But if you conform to the pattern of this world, you will become ungodly and your worship 
will not be accepted to the Lord. If yourself is right, you will bring the right gifts. Amen? The right offering. So, let us offer ourselves unto God first. Secondly, we offer to God, we offer gifts, we present gifts to the Lord because it is the result of what God has done. Our offering or gift to God represents what God has done to us. The gifts of the wise men represents who Jesus is and, and what he is about to do. Like for example, gold. Gold represents as Jesus as king. The gift that is not to be, uh, sorry, the gift that is to be brought to visit a king back then is gold. When you are visiting a king, you should offer gold. Jesus is not just a king, but the king of kings. His kingdom is not of this world, but in heaven. Jesus was born to rule in its person's life as king. When Jesus comes back, for the second time, he will kick out the Antichrist. As the scripture says in the book of Revelation, the, Re the Antichrist will rule seven years and then Jesus will come back and he will kick out the Antichrist from the throne and Jesus will reign to Jerusalem as king. Amen. Secondly is the frankincense. The frankincense represent as Jesus as the high priest. And the high priest. Jesus was born to mediate between God and man. We can only come to God through Jesus and no one else under heaven, give, uh, given under heaven, that can bring us or take us to God. Only Jesus. Why? Because he is the, not just a high priest, he is the great high priest. It says in the book of Hebrew, therefore, since we have a great high priest, no one is greater than Jesus. Because Jesus is the only great high priest who has ascended into heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, let us, uh, because Jesus is our high priest, great high priest, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So Jesus is the great high priest. Why? Because he is sinless. And the Bible says, the Bible encourages us to approach God's throne of grace. Because of Jesus, we can approach the throne of God anytime. The only one thing that a human priest cannot do when entering the holy place in the temple to mediate the sin of the people to God is to sit down. The high priest who can only enter the holy place <clears throat> once a year is not allowed to sit down. There is no chair inside the holy place. Have you noticed that? When the ceremonial sacrifice is done, the priest will exit the place. He will exit the place and will wait again for the next year to come. But when Jesus entered, not the temple made by human, by hum, not the temple made by human hands, but in heaven, the Bible says in heaven, made by God, he sat down, the Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God. Human priest doesn't sit because their duty is repeatedly done every once a year. But when Jesus came, he finished the requirements. Amen? He sat down. It means he is finished. And the third gift that was given to Jesus is mirror that represents his death. The reason why Jesus was born was to die for the sins of the world. No one is qualified. No one is is sinless. Only Jesus. That's why he is worthy. He is able and he is the one who will um, 
worthy to, to redeem us from our sin. His death and the resurrection is the conclusion why we uh, why he was born. The baby Jesus cannot save us. Listen to this. He needs to grow up and die on the cross for the forgiveness of sin. So after what Jesus has done to us, we will we can bring our offering to God as our worship. Now you can offer to God as the result of what Jesus has done to you. We bring our best gifts as our offering to God. When you give to God, give your best. Don't give the Lord the spare that you have or the leftover that you have. But when you offer your gifts to God, give your best to the Lord. Because our heart is right, we bring the right offering to God. Like what we're going, like what we do every year, and I believe this is the fifth year now that we're about to do this. This first month of the year, we will bring the first fruit of our labor. It is the first day's earning to offer to God. Our gift is not enough. Listen to this. Our gift is not enough to express our gratitude to God on how He loved and saved us. It is just part of our worship to God. Amen? Lastly, how we will worship God is we should be inspired by the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not re to return to Herod. Because these wise men were inspired by God, the Bible says, the Bible never mentioned about their numbers, but the tradition uh, told us that they were three because of the gifts that they presented to the Lord. But they nev the, the, the number were never mentioned or was never mentioned. So these wise men, because these wise men were inspired by God to worship, they were instructed in a dream not to return to Herod because God knows what is in the heart of Herod. They're planning when they saw the when they saw the baby Jesus and worship the baby Jesus after presenting their gifts. Their plan is to what to go back to Herod. So they have they are men of their own words, okay? But the Lord instructed them in a dream that not not to return to Herod. It's either a person is inspired by God or inspired by Satan. Herod was inspired by inspired by the devil. He did not uh, he, uh, he did not want to worship Jesus, but his plan is what, what he did. What the devil does, the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Herod wants to steal the throne from the next king. He killed and destroyed all the boys two years old and under in Beth and under in Bethlehem. That, that was the exact action of Herod after he found out what the wise men did. In Matthew chapter 2, in verse 16, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the, star, of the star's first appearance. So... Like what I said earlier, Jesus was two years old approximately that time when the Magi or when the wise men worship him. It is so important to be inspired by the Holy Spirit to worship God. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will be sensitive to what God wants us to do. God speaks through dreams, but most of the time he speaks to us through his written word. When you read the Bible and become obedient, you do your act of worship. Because worship is about doing things according to God's will. When we are inspired by the Holy Spirit, we will do the desire of God for us. Galatians 5, I'm almost done. Galatians 5 verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. 
then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. The, and the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature's desire. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful, pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there, as the Bible says, there is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Amen? So let the Holy Spirit be our guide so we can worship God. God sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to worship Him. Without the Holy Spirit, we will live a life like the unbelievers, a life that doesn't please God. A life that is led by the Spirit will live forever, and that is what we were called to. While a life that is led by sinful desire will be destroyed. In Galatians 6, and I will end here, Galatians 6 tells us, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from the, that sinful nature. But those who live to, to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let us get so let us not get tired of doing what is good. And at, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those who in the family of faith. Amen? Choose to live according to to the Spirit of God. So every time you do the right thing, that is the result of the Holy Spirit in your life. Do not get tired, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Do not get tired of doing good. Do not get tired of worshiping God. Whatever the situations are, because every action you do will be rewarded. Whether we are in fellowship or not, let us, not, let us be led by the Spirit of God to worship Jesus in our life. A Spirit-filled life is a worship-filled life. As a conclusion of our message this morning, like this wise man, God called us to be wise when we were saved. We will live wise if we worship God daily. When God is revealed in our life, then our worship to God is genuine, and the purpose of Jesus' coming has fulfilled us. Remember, Jesus came into our lives to be worshipped. Amen? Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to worship you. May this year be a year for us to fully, ex to fully express our worship to you. May your desire the result of the works of your hand 
and the leading of the Holy Spirit be experienced by every one of us so we can fully worship you. We commit to you, ourselves, to honor and to worship you for the rest of our lives. Jesus, say this with me. Jesus, you are the king of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.